everybody, welcome to our section 4.4 video lecture on adding and subtracting fractions. So the steps to adding and subtracting fractions uh, is that first you're going to have to find a least common denominator. I'm going to abbreviate that with an LCD, that stands for least common denominator. Then what you're going to do is you're going to make some equivalent fractions that have that LCD as its denominator. After that, uh, you just get to add, which is great. Uh, when you add fractions, uh, you can add or subtract the numerators and then those denominators stay the same. I'm using an N for numerators. And then the denominators stay the same. And lastly, after you do that, you just double check uh, if you can simplify it, because sometimes you can, um, and I am going to ask you guys to answer in simplest form. So you'll simplify those fractions if it's possible. Okay. So I have an illustration down here. I've got one fourth plus one eighth, and adding those together. So what you'll notice is one fourth is a really big piece and one eighth is a tiny piece. And so if I ask, how much do you have? Well, you wouldn't just say I have two pieces because one of them's a giant piece and one of them's a tiny piece, right? Uh, so this is where that least common denominator comes into play. So if I cut this circle into eighths, now they're the same size of pieces. And now I have two. Uh, of these eighths, one over here, which would make three eighths at the end. So the least common denominator, what it's doing is making all of your pieces of your figure the same size so you can actually compare them and actually add them or subtract them. Um, and so that's what the least common denominator is all about, is getting them all to be the same size. Um, so then you're making equivalent fractions. So the one fourth would be the same thing as two eighths, that would be an equivalent fraction. So it's equal to the one fourth, but it has the same denominator as the one eighth. Then when you add those together, two plus one equals three. And then if you notice the denominator stays the same because the size of our pieces don't change at all. So that it looks like. So let's uh, take a moment and talk about that least common denominator. So the least common denominator, so the part about least means it's the smallest. So it'll be the smallest number or smallest denominator. Sometimes they have variables in them once we get there. Uh, but we'll say smallest number uh, containing all factors from all of the denominators. Okay, it ran out of space a little bit there, but smallest number containing all the factors from all of the denominators. So how to find your LCD? Um, the first thing that I would do is write the prime factorization of every denominator that you have. So do that prime factorization. If you remember those little factor trees, you're gonna do those again. So write the prime factorization for all of your denominators, okay? Uh, the next thing we're gonna do is we're just gonna make a list of those factors. We're gonna list each factor the maximum number of times that it occurs in a single denominator. So if one denominator has two threes and another denominator only has one three, we're gonna list it twice because that's the most that somebody has it. So we're gonna list each factor the maximum number of times it occurs in a single denominator. Okay, 
And the last thing we do is just multiply that list together and that gives you your LCD. So we're gonna multiply those factors together. Okay, so let's try a few. In example one, we're just gonna focus on the LCD, finding that least common denominator. So I don't care about my numerators at all, I'm just looking at the denominators. Uh, my first one has a denominator of nine and a denominator of 15. So if I do my little factor tree here for nine, uh, three times three equals nine, and that would be its prime factorization. For 15, uh, three times five equals 15. So then for my LCD list, I have threes and fives, so I think who has the most threes? It was the nine, it had two threes. So I need two threes in my list. I also have a five and the one that has the most five is the 15, it has one five. So I need a five in my list as well. Now I can multiply those together. Three times three is nine and nine times five is 45. So my least common denominator would be 45. Let's do another one. In part B, I've got 5 twelfths and 7 fourteenths. I realize 7 fourteenths simplifies, but we're gonna go from here, okay? And just go ahead and do our prime factorization. So let's see, 12, uh, let's see, three times four equals 12, and two times two equals four. So my prime factorization would have a three and two twos. For 14, uh, two times seven gives me 14. So for my LCD, my least common denominator, I would need the one that has the most twos. So right here, I need two twos, the most threes. So there's a three over here and the most sevens. So I need one seven, okay? And let's see, let's multiply everything together. So let's see, seven times three is 21. 21 times two is 42. And then 42 times 2 is 84. So if I multiply all this together, my least common denominator is 84. All right. Now let's see. Let's switch so you guys can it get as messy here. Um, the next one, I've got 20, 25, and 40. So let's see. Doing my prime factorization for 20. Um, let's see. How about 4 times 5? and four would be two times two. For 25, 25 is five times five. 40, just looking over here, that might be four times 10. Four is two times two, and 10 is two times five. So looking at this, I've got a lot of twos and a lot of fives over here. I'll do my LCD up here since I'm running out of space. So who has the most twos? Looks like 40 does. It has three twos, so that's what I need. One, two, three, I need three twos. Who has the most fives? It's 25, it has two fives, so that's what I need, is two fives. In case you're wondering, like, why didn't we use anything from the 20? Uh, because it didn't have the most of anything. So that's what you're looking for, is who has the most of each factor. So let's go ahead and multiply those out. If it was me doing it into my head, I would think two times five is 10. Another two times five would be another 10. 10 times 10 is 100. Then I've got 100 times this two in front, which would be 200. So my least common denominator is 200 for that one, okay? All right, last one, part D. I'm gonna let you guys have a minute and see if you can do that one. Our denominators are 12, 18, and 24. See if you can make those factor trees and see if you can find the least common denominator. So go ahead and pause your video, find the least common denominator for part D, and I will give you the answer here in three, two, one. For the least common denominator in part D, you're, you should need three twos, two threes, and when you multiply everything together, you're gonna get 72. How'd you do on that one? Pretty good? Great. Now let's actually practice adding and subtracting. So this is where we're going back to those steps that I talked about at the beginning. 
So to add or subtract, we need to get them to have the same denominator first, because otherwise they're not the same size of piece. So we're going to find that least common denominator first. We're going to make equivalent fractions so that all of our fractions have the same denominator. Then we can finally add uh, the fractions together, which would mean adding or subtracting our numerators and our denominators stay the same. And then afterwards, we'll simplify if we can. So let's try that. In number one, uh, and sorry, in part A, I've got one tenth plus two fifths. So let's see, my least common denominator, my 10 breaks up into five times two. So for my least common denominator, I definitely need a five and I need a two. So my least common denominator is actually 10 for this one. So let's get them both to have a denominator of 10. So one tenth already is there, but for two fifths, I want to have a denominator of 10. So five times two equals 10. So I'm gonna multiply by two in the denominator and multiply by two in the numerator. Two times two is four. The four tenths would be an equivalent fraction on that one. Now I'm ready to add. Uh, I add my numerators together. One plus four is five. My denominator stays the same because my pieces don't change size. It would be five tenths. And then I see, can I simplify it? I actually can, which is kind of fun. Five and 10 are both divisible by five. So I'm gonna divide by five and divide by five to simplify. Five divided by five is one. 10 divided by five is two. So my answer is one half. Let's do another one. In part B, I have to have negative one fifth plus negative two twenty fifths. So 25 is five times five, five is prime. So my least common denominator has the most number of fives that anybody has, which would be right here. My least common denominator is 25. So let's get both fractions to have the same denominator. For my first fraction, I have negative one fifth. To go from five to 25, I would multiply by five. So I'm gonna multiply by five in the denominator and multiply by five in the numerator so it stays equivalent. So five times one is five, it'll still be negative, so we'll have negative five over 25, plus uh, the next fraction already has the denominator that I'm looking for, so it'll stay the same, it'll be plus negative two over 25. Then I have negative five plus negative two, and when a negative plus another negative, I am adding and it, the answer is going to be negative. Negative 5 plus negative 2 would be negative 7. My denominator stays the same, it's still 25. So my answer is negative 7 25ths. Okay. All right, last one on this page is 1 fourth plus negative 9 tenths. So let's see here, my denominator 4 breaks down into 2 times 2. 10 breaks down into 2 times 5. So for my least common denominator, I would need two twos, and I would need one five. So that would be two times two is four, times five would be 20. So now I want both fractions to have that denominator of 20. So my first fraction, it has a denominator of four, and if I wanna go from four to 20, I would multiply by five in the numerator and denominator. So four times five gives me the 20 I'm looking for. Five times one is five. In my second fraction, the denominator is 10. And to go from 10 to 20, I would multiply by two. And I would multiply the same thing in the numerator and denominator. So 10 times two gives me the 20 I'm looking for. Nine times two is 18. And it was negative before, and it still is negative now. Now I need to add because they have the same denominator. So I'm doing five plus negative 18 and five plus negative 18 would be negative 13. The denominator stays the same, it's still 20. Okay, and it doesn't simplify 13, it's nice and prime um, and doesn't have anything in common with the 20. All right, I'm gonna continue a few more notes on the second video. So if you wanna stay tuned, uh, you can watch part two in just a minute.